Thank you for tuning in to This Automation Life, brought to you by Brenner Fiedler. I'm your host, Jeremy Schubert. Each week we discuss technologies used in automation. This week, Paul Oppenheim, our sensor and control specialist with, here at Brenner Fiedler, is going to discuss NPN and PNP. Thanks for joining us today, Paul. Excellent. Thanks. Good to be here again. So, uh, this question always comes up. and. Right. Uh, it's really confusing because the two are very similar. Yep. But let's just start with what is the difference between NPN and PNP? Okay, first of all, first of all let's, even, let's even take a step back. When we're just talking about NPN and PNP, we're actually referring to a transistor. And a transistor uh, is basically, you can think of it as an electronic switch that allows energy to flow or not flow. Um, basically, uh, when you choose NPN or PNP, what I like to do to help simplify things is I think of the world's most simplest circuit. And I always think of a light bulb and a battery. So let's just first kind of get like a mental image of a light bulb and a battery. Now imagine now having the positive side of the battery tied to one side of the light bulb. Have the negative side of the battery tied to the other side of the light bulb. At which point now would you say that the, the light bulb would be on or off? I hope so. I would hope it'd be... Or you've got the wrong bulb for the battery. Sounds good to me. So I would say, yes, it's on at this point because you've completed a circuit. Yep. Now envision a pair of scissors and you snip one of the wires. Okay. The light is turned off now because you've broken the circuit. Now the question is, which wire did you snip? They just snipped the wire I and wanna, went from the... I want to snip the positive wire. You want to snip the positive wire. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. That would should give you an idea of to use a P and P transistor because okay. a PNP transistor is used for switching the positive side of a power supply. Okay. And then likewise if you had snipped the other's wire so to speak you'd use the, P the NPN transistor to switch the negative side of the power okay. supply. Okay. So yeah. PNP I'm going to get a positive voltage right. usually a machines it's a 12 or 24 volts most sure. likely. Exactly. And an NPN zero volts. Right. Exactly. Now that's kind of make this slightly more applicable to a machine. Now, you probably won't be necessarily having a battery and a light bulb that you're working with, but you can now think of, replace the word battery with a power supply. So, but again, like a battery, you have a positive and negative side. And then the light bulb itself, you can think of that as the load or the device that you're actually switching. I want to make mine a, just a simple relay. That's fine, okay. excellent. So what you can think now is, uh, you can have, your circuit would now probably much look like this, where you'd have if we're gonna, if we're cutting, let's say the positive side. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's first hook up the negative side of the uh, power supply to, to the relay. one side of the coil of the relay. Cool. Okay. Now the other side of the coil of the relay is going to collect, is going to connect to the collector side of that PNP transistor. Okay. And this is the part of the sensor or whatever it is that nobody really sees. That's they, correct. That's they correct. They just see uh, three wires. That the plus, the minus, and then your output. Good, excellent point. And you'd almost normally, and if normally you will find that the, the international color code for those are uh, brown for positive, blue for ground, and black is the output, which is actually going to your device or what you're controlling. Okay. So again, that coil side of the um, relay is now tied to the collector. Or in this case, we'd say the black wire of that sensor. Okay. So it's a transistor type. So and and internally in that sensor, there's a transistor. That's correct. Okay. Right. And then if you were to take the brown wire of the sensor and tie that to the positive terminal of the power supply, and then take the blue wire and tie that to the negative terminal of the power supply, the same negative terminal that that opposite side of the coil the relay is tied to, you actually will have completed your circuit at that point. Okay. So then when the sensor senses its target, like what we kind of talked about last time, um, whether it senses the target or doesn't sense the target, it will then turn on and turn off the output. And what that means is you're actually opening or closing that positive side of so the circuit. Just like the third grade experiment with the mechanical lever switch, when sure. you close that and the battery and the light bulb the light bulb tur turns on. That's right, exactly. Okay. Except you've now replaced the lever with the transistor itself, and instead of you, the human opening and closing the lever, that's the sensor doing that job. Okay. There you go. Gotcha. And we can just as assume on NPN, everything is, is essentially the opposite. Exactly. You're okay. just now connecting the negative side. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then that brings up a question, and I've been asked this before, why would I want to use NPN 
or PMP? What what matters? Where I, it seems like it, it doesn't. Well, yeah, it kind of it kind of depends again how um, which which side. Like when you get back to which side of the circuit you're breaking, um, it's a lot of times with these machines, it's like you choose one and you kind of stick with it. Now, so let's say you might just want to, if we're always going to be breaking the positive side of the circuit of all times, we'll be using PNP. Mm -hmm. If you're breaking the negative side, you're going to use NPM. So it's almost like you've got to choose a flavor and stick with it. But there might also be some safety that comes into play as well, and you kind of have to decide what's, what's important to you. So let's say, for instance, if something was to go wrong, if let's say we're talking about the negative side of the power of the power supply that we're cutting, we're using, my sensor failed or your sensor fails, somehow and you're using, it got shorted. Sure, using an NPN sensor, mm -hmm. and let's say the you have to then decide. Okay, um, if that was if that somehow that broken wire or whatever the case was to somehow short circuit the ground, it would then simulate the same on turning. Or that the same on signal that the sensor would have done. Okay. Is that acceptable or not acceptable? Oh, if it's not acceptable, and my circuit is susceptible to being shorted to ground by accident, then perhaps I should be using P and P sensors. Okay. So if that ever happens, I can be ensured I don't get a false trigger. Oh, okay. okay. I don't. I don't like false triggers. I so. don't either. Uh, <laughs> it makes my there... life considerably much more uncomfortable. <laughs> is there? <laughs> Is there any reason somebody wouldn't want to use a PNP then? What hap What are the potential problems with using that, that something? Would, Everybody just want to use PNP at this point. Right, okay, and that's the other thing is, let's say, uh, with PNP, if there is any um, possibility of a, let's say, short circuit to, let's say, um, maybe like a power supply or something like that that's, that's fueling a, a voltage and it's susceptible to that, okay, again, if there's any possibility that there could be some arcing or something like that that could cause a positive voltage to occur, then again, you're like, okay, I need to have something that I will never see any positive voltage here whatsoever to okay. ensure that I want to go with a negative or an NPN okay. sensor to compensate for that. Okay. I, I guess it would probably be easier to um, short that output to like an earth ground as opposed to the zero on the power supply, which might be about the same voltage level. Yeah. And maybe destroy the sensor or blow a fuse. It's something like that that okay. could happen too. Sure. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so it still sounds like a toss up. Either way, you got potential problems. It's just which problem do you want to potentially have? Pretty much. Yeah. And, and, and again, it's kind of like also you, you find a flavor and you stick with it. And yeah. um, I, I, I'm sure in some cases it might have been in the past with some trial and error of what, what, what your environment is and just yeah. kind of how the machine is designed. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, I think that's all we have for this week. Paul, thanks for joining us. Sure. And thank all of you for listening to Brenner Fiedler's This Automation Life. Be sure to continue tuning in each week in the upcoming episodes. We've got uh, a discussion of laser sensors, and um, I think I will be talking about some motors, different motor technologies. Sounds exciting. Cool. All right.